What's up, folks? Uh, welcome back to the new Dirty Decibels podcast. My name is Jeff, and I am hanging out. I have the pleasure of being in the virtual company of uh, three three fifths of the folks, the lovely, talented folks in time and place. So, what's going on, guys? Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> Not too much. Thank you Hello, for uh, thank you for joining me. Now that we've got Mike's lighting uh, set up there, I, I mean. Can we take some time to appreciate it's been mentioned, it's all I can think about, but I, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to put that in your head. Yeah. Not my I'm fault. a pro. Mike, you look like you're testifying in front of Congress. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, where are you sending the Power Rangers next? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, she hit me first. Anyway. <laughs> uh, no, sir, uh, thank you guys for coming on and hanging out. Um, so you guys just put out a, a new EP, American White Noise, which I've been listening to pretty much nonstop over the past week or so. Um, You're the one. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic. And like, I can't even, there's like so much to go into with just even the, the name choice of, of the record uh, and the name choice of most of the songs on it and, and the lyrics of which I was curious to talk to you guys a little bit about when you guys were actually able to get into the studio and record it. Was it pre pandemic that you did most of the work on it or yeah, was it? Yeah. So we, we recorded the, the, the most of it in, was it summer of 2019, 2018? I believe so. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think it was July of 2019. We went in, did all the basic tracks, um, they seemed okay, so we went back to finish them off uh, in August of 2019. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Was there a, a a big reason for the kind of delay time between when you guys finished it and when you guys decided to put it out, or was it just sort of like we need to wait till it's the right time? I think we might have had some grander hopes to do a few more songs, um, and then you know everything happened. Yeah. Uh, and then we couldn't do anything with the songs. Uh, and then as the year progressed, uh, you know, it got a little politicky and it seemed like these songs might um, fit the moment, as it yeah. were. And then we uh, ramped it up again, remotely and safely, of course. And uh, it, it seems to have, uh, the collision of our songs and what's going on seems to have worked out well. So you did do some like uh, additional recording on it at like, after the pandemic had already started? Uh, no, uh, we did all the mixing and mastering. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So you guys were kind of sitting on it and then, and then let it go. I, I mean, it's funny because it's like you, you, you say that you're like the, the way the timing works out, you think maybe we'll do more with this, but then when, I don't know, I can't think of, it's almost like, I can't think of a better time that you guys could have put it out in, in terms of just the subject matter and everything. Um, well, which... it's funny. Uh, so we had talked about like when we were going to put it out and, you know, obviously it's, a, it's pretty political, but like when we were talking about putting it out, the date that we chose, we we're like, all right, well, this, this makes sense. And we didn't, uh, plan for an insurrection to happen that day that mm. kind of cemented mm -hmm. a lot of <laughs> shit that we, yeah. that's on the record. Talk about so. like eerie I, I don't know. Yeah, that's like that's well, like some eerie stars aligning. I'll say this: um, the first song that opens up uh, the EP "Repent" was written, Jesus, uh, 2016 or so. It was in response or so to uh, Trump that being <laughs> being uh, elected. But uh, you know what? Jesus Christ, four years later, still works every word of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> things didn't get better after we wrote the song. Yeah, oddly uh, enough, oddly and re enough. repent. You had actually, you guys had released that slightly earlier, right? On the split, is that correct? Yeah. With that, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was an original version of it that we recorded in 2017, I think, maybe 2018. Uh, and then we went back and we kind of did a, a glossier kind of pass over it, and we did a, a different version of it. Yeah, we felt we could do better, you know, quicker. We added a lot more things. I hate when bands actually re record songs, but. I think this time around we we nailed it as to uh, the original vision. Yeah, totally. No, I mean they take on their own life like in different ways. Like the same song can be done in two totally different ways twice, and it'd be just as powerful in both ways. I think. Anyway. So uh, <laughs> we very very much enjoyed working with uh, Elio Deluca over at the Soul Shop in Medford. He's okay, a cool. total pro. 
he kicked our asses in all the right ways. And it was a, such a pleasure. And I, you know, when all this blows over, I hope we get to go back and knock some more stuff out because I think he brings out the best in us. Yeah. So, yes. I, I've yeah, got to gotta throw that. in. I've got to throw in that Elio uh, worked on one of my favorite albums, Titus Andronicus's uh, "The Monitor." Uh, so, you know, hands down, I will listen to him. When we were recording, he was telling me things about the uh, the songs that I had written. Uh, certainly, we wrote the entire songs together, but he is just telling me things I didn't even know about my songs. And it was uh, like just a religious experience to work with them, because you're just like, "All right, dude. Well." Fine, we'll do it your way. I guess it's you. You have the hit record. Fine, but uh, he is uh, honestly just so great to work with, and I I, awesome. I do say everyone should record with him, uh, at least you know around Medford if he can make it. He, yeah. He's one of the like I've you know done a bunch of stuff with, with different places, and like he's one of those people that he will tell you with very little provocation. Hey, that was really bad. Do that again. Which when you're yeah. recording stuff is like kind of the nicest thing you can hear. Because yeah. if somebody tells you like, yeah, that, that sounds like shit. Don't do that. You're like, oh, fuck. Thank God. Because I thought it sounded good. And then it would be permanent <laughs> if it ended up in the record. Yeah. Or if they were wishy-washy about it. And then yeah, you'd be like, back later and you'd be like, why did you let us do that? It sounds like. Yeah. Sounds he's, he's really good about <laughs> telling you like, it's good enough. And I'm like, okay. He's, but you a, can do better. He does yeah. see, like, he is the third grade teacher, like, sees your potential. Yeah. Like, he, oh, no, yeah. you can do a better thumb painting. Oh, yeah, of course. You got a guy who like, won't be that. like, your breath smells like shit, but he'll say, like, do you want a breath mint? Exactly. Like, he's, exactly. That's, how, that's his, he's yeah. very good. <laughs> you want a it's breath mint, you fucking pig? It's encouraged. <laughs> it's that encouraged again? improvement. And I'm like, oh, why? Okay, it sucked. Okay, we'll do it again. <laughs> encouraged improvement, definitely. Yeah, no, I definitely. feel like you want, uh, like, so, people... Totally. People always speak, speak the highest of those producers who like kick kick your ass completely, but in the most like uh, I don't know what the, the right word to say is. It's like you you have a you have like you have like a cross between coach and cheerleader in that yeah, sense, where it's, it's like they're like, they're they're driving you hard, but like because they want to cheer you on. He's, you know, he's our um, Bill Belichick, and I'm sure he <laughs> re-record. <laughs> more with him i'm sure there will be fists but uh he's brilliant <laughs> and i and i do say everyone should record with him uh yeah. he has a vision and he knows very more few than places all of I've us ever gotten like studio fatigue like i was we were there for hours and hours and hours when we tracked because he did our our previous ep ships at pass okay. he did that one as well uh and it was the first time i had ever worked with him i think though yeah. i think he did the uh, he did the uh four point restraints record that that was there so that was the first time i worked with him but the first time that we like as a band sat down with him was our last ep and it was one of those cool experiences where we were there for hours and hours and hours and by the end of it we're all kind of sick of each other but at the same time we're all you know like i feel like all the pieces are moving in the same direction it's a bonding experience between pri prisoners yeah yeah <laughs> there's yeah. a difference between leaving the studio exhausted in a in a bad way and leaving the studio exhausted in a good way i do yeah. remember i do remember it's funny being like spending the greater part of the the last decade like in the more in the live sound world i i feel i feel out of touch a lot of times with like the studio environment and i feel like i love talking to bands and learning about their experiences recording with mm -hmm. different people because there's so i feel like in the boston area specifically they, there's so many little niche places that i've never even heard of which yeah. isn't saying much at all but like small studios here and there like that are kind of just tucked in around with like really great producers maybe even just like one person that runs it but you know even with with the you know chill house has had some pretty big success but i still yeah. feel like they're i still feel like they're kind of a, a well-kept i can also go off on chill house so a good. little bit and like you know i know like my brother and uh and, and several friends as well in particular that like I mean, you guys have recorded like kumi like you guys have recorded with him uh well over at, at chill house too and like can't can't have enough good things to say about it and like the experience nothing, nothing over there and stuff like that, that. so still... um yeah i always i always just love learning about where people record stuff and like what kind of experience well, honestly they have it really does come down cool. to uh experience like knowing about mics uh you know elio has just all the amps you could ever imagine like three or four pianos organs the whole thing he knows to the letter what they do what they sound like what your amp that you brought in sounds like 
I, it was such a comfortable experience and also like a very illuminating experience to record. Like yeah. it made me want to write more songs so he could shit on them and then tell me how to make them better. <laughs> yeah, uh, He's great at that in a nice way. Yeah. You guys are like, I feel like the kings, the kings of the EP. And I feel like you've, you've re- released like some you know, a really s- tiny pond. So many EPs. <laughs> but Say like, a lot of the people in the back. I feel like you do it really well like each one is, on like, each one's very uh it's very like beautifully its own thing i don't know i don't know if you guys want to talk about the way that that's come together with like just the different eps that you guys have released uh, well because i like it i don't know well i think no, really, no, no. i don't have a lot of go on, go on, go on, go on. Mm-hmm. it seems like you know based on like circumstances uh that's just how things have worked out and it's worked out really well I think one of the benefits of doing EPs is that you get in, you have your your themes or whatever the album or the EP is about, and then it's over before people get sick of it. And hopefully that leaves people wanting more. Uh, hopefully it feels like a complete thing. That's what I right. like. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yes. Like That's your a, yeah, your record right size. Yeah. Your records feel very complete to me. Uh, and, and and I think that is like speaks to the quality of of the production on them and 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 the songwriting on them. Like they just they they feel correct. Like well, that's what we tried know. to do with uh, certainly ships that pass. Like all four songs had the same kind of general idea. Uh, there was something about being out at sea, being alone, being isolated. Um, for all four songs. Uh, I think we're having really great luck with having Jack do just a cover at the end of the album. I love uh, that. You know, and, and that certainly helps to kind of, you know, smooth the whole thing over. Um, yeah. But, you know, whenever Jack is on the song, it's beautifully uh, heartfelt, sung uh, with such soul that I could never, I, I can only sing angry. It, uh, it does. Yeah, you couldn't do that. It yeah, seems like no, we have these little no. like uh, three act EPs with a little epilogue at the end. It's a nice little story and then a little yeah. capper. Yeah. Hopefully it's, you know, people think, oh, I like what they did. And here's this thing I kind of know that's also good. And we I mean, were really only just singing for the Zoomers, I suppose. There's that. <laughs> so think, like, like when I joined Time and Place, because I had done like accordion and stuff when it was just an acoustic outfit. Right. And then when they went, because it was this kind of like cell dividing thing where it was an acoustic band and then an acoustic band with a drummer and then electric and then, uh, okay, like punk rock band again. It, bl- it grew. Like, yeah. Ouroboros can have a little Ouroboros as a treat. Um, like a decade of, of evolution, yeah. I would say. Yes. Indeed. It's gross at both ends. So it's fine. But when I joined, uh, there were a lot of songs that were previously recorded. Um, on other time and place records where uh, the one that jumps out to me is the pact that we did on the split with uh, blame shifters, which was mm-hmm. my favorite song that time and place had done. And then I was, I get this wild hair up my ass. I'm like, we always need to do the electric version of that song. We would end sets with it. And by the time we recorded, I was like, all right, this is really cool. And still to this day, I think that's my favorite thing that I've recorded with time and place. But um uh-oh. Can I stop you right Uh-oh. there? <laughs> it's, in, it's incredibly funny because that is the first song that we ever played together back in 2009, yeah. in June of 2009, with just me and Megan. That was the first time play song ever. And yeah. has kind of taken up this life uh, that your uh, are re-recording, but certainly your action to it, and certainly Mike's as well, uh, brought new life to it. it yeah. you know, that's the nature of music. Yeah, and that's why I love like the, the the way we do the EPs is usually like one or two new songs. They always have a Jack cover, and they always have a re-record of something that's old that we can do in this in this new format, which I always thought was a really cool idea. I feel which like it's I go on. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> keep no, keep going. Which I will say was not exactly the uh, the want uh, of this EP. Um, we did want to add, like, the, we, we do have a, a bunch of songs, you know, in the roster, but it seemed with the uh, pandemic and everything, you got to get this shit out as fast as possible because I'm not sure if there's going to be anyone to listen to it after this. 
<laughs> yeah. It's, well, on that note, good night, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Prayers um, up. <laughs> heavy, heavy. Um, you really wanted to ask about the about Frightened Rabbit. So, uh, a band that I've very recently started to to, to can get you into can you take bit. that? No, it's 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 uh, been always Jack who brought Frightened Rabbit to the band. Uh, going back to I think 2011, 2012, when we were a wedding band for uh, our friends, he brought Old Old Fashioned uh, to the band, and we covered that for the wedding. Um, he brought this uh, the twist to the band, and everyone loved it. I mean, you know, we kind of put our own little spin on it, but. Jack's always been kind of the cheerleader for that band and, and uh, certainly me and Megan adore the band and I uh, have a special place in my heart for the songwriter. Um, it's just brilliant, brilliant songwriting. And uh, unfortunately, of course, he passed and everything, but right. um, no, Jack's been the driving force behind that. And uh, honestly, you know, I had left for the day when we recorded uh, the music, so we did uh, all three of the music tracks for the EP, and then I fucked off uh, for reasons. And, uh, they recorded the twist without me knowing it, and I came back. I'm like, holy shit, you guys, they murdered it. They murdered uh, the tracks for it, and uh, Jack's vocals on it are incredibly heartfelt. You can feel it. It's, it's soulful, almost. Yeah. the gang vocals at the end are brilliant too like it's a brilliant like stamp on it um, well and, and that's the thing and I, and I have to put that in there like we don't usually do a lot of covers but the covers we do we want to put on our own brand and of course, we just yeah. try to change it up a little bit and you know we're getting better at at really making it our own while it's still trying to pay homage to the uh to the band and uh i you know, we would not have ever released it if we didn't think it was respectful and good and uh, of the level that uh, deserved um, recording. So uh, I'm very happy we did it. And uh, kudos to Jack. I mean, he's yeah. the man behind it. Yeah, totally. I feel like the um, I was curious. I was curious to know, like, like where the where the uh, you know the interest came from. It's like they're they're just a they're a really interesting band. I feel like I'm. I'm very new to listening to their music and I've heard um, like Frank Turner does, you know, his cover of uh, the modern leper, which is like, I literally cry when I listen to it. Um, <laughs> like I can't physically stop myself from crying. Oh. And I would like, I would love to be able to cover that song myself someday. And I, I feel like if I tried to play that on stage in front of people, I would just start crying in the middle of it and look so, like an idiot. So little known but, fact, a uh, little known fact, me and Jack actually toured with Frank Turner uh back in 2007 i think oh no shit that's amazing i didn't know yeah that. uh just two dates from uh umass amherst uh and binghamton uh new york where we were playing with oh, our shit. other band um i mentioned the spokes and he was fucking no one then absolutely no one he had just come out with oh, i don't even remember that it was just an ep um but we drove him from umass to binghamton new york and i believe actually jack got a, a ticket in new york for speeding because we were trying to make the show and he still doesn't pay that off and uh i'm not sure jack is allowed in new york anymore <laughs> uh, that was in 2007 so uh yeah it was just for inflation my god that's fucking awesome yes, yes really yes. we should we could do an entire separate podcast episode about time and places relationship with the law our rap sheet is getting quite long here um i yeah. fucked the law this is the stuff i've been ready to <laughs> no that's 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 awesome um yeah no, but I yeah, just, no, no, no. It, it's, it's it's all the same kind of uh same kind of world of music the shit that really hits you uh frank yeah, totally. rabbit oh, frank turner yeah. it's all there and it really is good soulful true uh just i don't know just good lyrics yeah. people that mean it and that's what we've always tried to do I suppose. yeah that that tune is very it lends itself to your to your sound very well too just like with like I said, with the gang vocals and everything, it, it, it works really well. I'm, I'm still like so new into Frightened Rabbit that it's like, I feel like if I'm hearing more covers and I'm hearing their original stuff, but um, 
definitely as far as you know songwriting goes uh that dude was so talented brilliant brilliant just yeah like (laughs) gut-wrenching yes Um, so yeah no that's that's really rad um i i know i started to say it's i still feel like in my opinion it to me like it's it still sounds like it's building like it's still like this release is still heavier than the last to me in terms of your progression. Like you were talking about, like of being more electric and like heavier. Um, so I'm, I'm, I was also curious to know if that's something that you feel like is still uh, a trajectory that you're on. Like is the next, is the next time in place release going to be like, you know, even, even, even more, full full full-blown punk like i mean it's it still has the and like the latest release i feel like still has the anthemic gang vocal like folk roots in it and but it's the way that you guys have pivoted into the electric forum has been like really interesting to hear that that evolution so i i absolutely have an answer to this uh as far as my vision for our group but i want to hear it from you too first (laughs) you hear that mike it's his vision Oh, oh, we get to speak. <laughs> oh, um, I'm glad I get to go along on the ride. I I think um, the thing about ships, it was like our first coming together of you know five people recording and kicking ass, and there was a magic about it. If I can be sentimental, it just felt like yeah, okay, these are the people. The most recent EP, American White Noise, for me that was like okay, now we know what this thing can do. Let's fucking kick the tires. Yeah. And just go for it. And so there was a momentum that I think is still going. I don't know what that's going to lead to in terms of what the songs sound like or whatever. I think that's irrelevant. They can sound like whatever they want to sound like. But we, the five of us, are able to lock in to a place that is just, it, it's mind-blowing, like what a band can do and be. And I think we are... We're, it, there, I, I don't know it's ineffable i'm having trouble explaining it i just know that when i'm behind these guys looking at them i think yeah this is this is the thing this well it's, the it's thing. fucking friends we know each other like we yeah. know you know the next step so Ryan? um speaking of of uh like origin stories uh it was you and megan first that was like the first uh incarnation yes sir yes june okay. 20th 2009 you know okay yeah cool. we both uh i showed her the pact and i was like i would like you to play bass for this band and then uh i think within like uh one or two weeks she had bought an upright bass and then learned how to play that and then wow, i had nice. asked uh jack who now plays guitar uh to learn how to play guitar about a month later uh <laughs> he had never played guitar before so we were all learning together and that's awesome it was just such an incredible yeah we just all worked off of each other and it's all about patience um creating and patience but you know always seeing like down the road there is a goal we're going to write this song we're going to do it together and uh we've stuck with it i mean it's been since 2009 yes always been there how did you guys did you and megan know each other like like how did you guys know each other was it just uh, from growing up together or what? So I had a, I had a band, uh, a wrench in the spokes that I started in about 2007, uh, kind of a, a punk ska band. We played a lot of like basement shows, you know, radio shows, all, all the stuff. Um, it was, it was a, you know, a solid band. Um, she also, uh, was the bassist of the frills at the time. And, you know, I don't know. It was over one summer and I was just, I asked her to kind of hang out and maybe be yeah, the not, basis. Not to interject. This is all at UMass Amherst. Uh, so you had that scene, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what the kids are calling it, but uh, okay. it seems like it was very fruitful for music at that time. Like you telling me oh, these yeah. stories, like, damn, that sounds shit. That sounds like I remember fun. going to a couple of time and play shows back then when I just knew. Yeah, I just Gallery? like. I remember... <laughs> Well, I knew like like all these fans because I used to live in Western Mass nice. before I knew you guys. But then uh, I remember going to like you know a couple of basement shows at Time and Place and stuff like that, and just going. I don't know if you remember the one where I don't remember Brandon got arrested. Yeah, and I just remember everybody having their own like version of that night where it's like, 
well, I guess we're like, we all just got to walk home or, you know, figure out where to go from here. Cause it was this basement show. I forget who else was playing that night. This was in Amherst. Uh, yeah, yes, was in Amherst. this is Amherst. I will, I will. Damn. Yeah. It's not even like you can take my own Uber defense. anywhere out there. It's like, you got to yeah. walk like miles. <laughs> Let me come to my own defense here. Yeah, I Brandon, put on you, a, uh... you beat those murder charges, right? You, you walk. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, there was a land in Rainville ah, uh, next door. That so, guy, uh, yeah, he's uh he's not doing so well. Uh, no, uh, so I was put on shows uh, with Jack as well uh, up in Northern uh, Amherst, North Amherst, as they call it. Oh. Uh, and I had a great idea of great having ten party. bands in our basement. Uh, Megan's band being the Frills, and we were also time place at the time. Um, and then somebody called the cops on us because there was 200 people uh, <laughs> who would and it's, uh, and it's come out. Yeah, yes, and it's indeed. Amherst, yeah, <laughs> where the cops so, have nothing uh, better to do. <laughs> so uh, the the cops told me, uh, you got to get everyone out of here. And I was like, well, some of these people are too drunk to drive. And then immediately he just fucking arrested me and then sat me down in front of fucking everyone. Um, it just in the in the garage so they did that they cleared out everyone and then they arrested jack for no good reason <laughs> God, <laughs> jack too they arrested jack and he was just arrested because he said he lived there i don't well, know if and he had a mouthy friend <laughs> uh, honestly jeff no no i uh i had a what photographer friend with me from England, who actually awesome. photog- <laughs> who, who, who took a picture of me uh, in the back of the police car, screaming <laughs> out the window. Uh, I will send you that picture as well. Uh, <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. That's fine. I mean, you don't picture you don't picture house shows in Amherst. You know, you picture house shows in Austin. Like, yeah, where the, the cops you? will the cops will come, but there's not that much that they're gonna do. Yeah, like, you know, hey guys, come on. Uh, they're they're gonna go on. Good. They're gonna try to go on Facebook forums bef- like the week beforehand and be like, "Hey guys, where's the punk rock show?" And then, in my defense, in my defense, <laughs> and, then people are gonna, and then people are gonna not tell them where it is. But you know, we had the loudest, best fucking band, Sasquatch uh, Telephone Company frills everyone we had 10 bands i think mallory was there as well uh you know i was flirting with uh fate at that one but <laughs> sorry jack you flew too close <laughs> to the sun brandon <laughs> yes indeed yes indeed that's uh, that's funny I, I i wanted to tell you a funny story about about megan i used to run it so i used to see megan all the time uh at she like the place where she worked I don't know if she still works there, but in Watertown. Um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I, director. so I was hired by this theater to work and that, that company used to provide like live entertainment at lunch for a couple of summers. They like did this yeah. program where they would have bands come and play on their courtyard. And, um, and I got hired to do the sound, uh, for a bunch of them. And like, I used to see her all the time. Like she'd be like out there whatever. And then I remember like one of the first time and place shows I actually went to, I was like, I'm sorry. This is really weird. I don't mean to be a creep, but like, I recognize you, like, do you work where you work? And, um, and she was like, yeah, I do. And I was like, Oh, like I work there all the time. So that's like how I actually met her. Like technically the first time. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but, uh, but no, like, uh, it's pretty cool to hear like how you guys got together like that. And and I feel like it's always, it's always, there's no origin. There's no band's origin stories that is, that is without, something like the story you just told i mean maybe it's not always getting arrested but it's like usually it's close or it's like <laughs> honestly our our origin story is just a whole lot of love and uh we we're all in bands together we respected each other and we wanted like learn and grow together and we did that and it took a lot of patience and you know that it, it worked out fine it was always tons of fun i mean that was it yeah you know where did the uh speaking of the companionship with the folks in the old Edison, how did that, how did that come about? Did you guys know each other prior to forming the bands or did that come about? I'm assuming there was a move here at some point from the Amherst area to the Boston area. So talk about that. You're absolutely correct on that. (laughs) Um, So I do believe that Megan had a, had a connect. Uh, They had known each other from something, maybe yeah, 2009, 2010, but I don't know. Uh, our sound at the time completely gelled with each other. Yeah. Uh, we hung out and 
we literally became best friends uh, overnight. I mean, these are the people that I still call on. I still love completely um, and will. I mean, we did a split with them as well, but they're uh, some of the most uh, technically proficient musicians I've met in the folk scene uh, and probably the best lyricists uh, I know uh, to be alive. So that's kind of a relationship you continue uh, if you need these kind of talented, beautiful people like we did. They're, like the old Edison, I mean, we all know the old Edison, but like th that was well, one yeah. of the things that is just, I remember moving to Boston in like 2008 and then meeting a bunch of people in like the Boston music scene and stuff like that and getting involved in that. And then seeing the old Edison for the first time and being like, holy shit, if anybody is going to make it, it's the old Edison. 100 percent there were they were just that band that was like holy shit they are despite being like just all of them being like ah we'll practice when we practice ah we'll play when we play ah we'll do a residency at the midway on tuesdays or whatever like just it was off off the cuff brilliant good at what they do yeah like i still hate them for it because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're just like well fuck you if you're gonna be that good at it and just be like yeah whatever like fuck leave some for the rest <laughs> of us man but like, they're just one of those bands that like, I, I forever will be like, well, that was lightning in a bottle. And I don't know how anybody can do that. So. And certainly uh, I would say, um, you know, we were a band before we had met them, but they have certainly become the greatest inspiration on me and the band since then. Can I ask a real, I need to ask a really embarrassing question. I'm, I'm embarrassed oh, that I don't, I don't know the, or that I didn't realize the answer to this. Uh, was Brownstone your song first or was it an old Edison no, song? No, no. Let me tell you about Brownstone. No, okay. uh, <laughs> Brownstone I was don't, old. I actually thought it was an old Edison song. It and is. You're got, absolutely right. Okay, it was. okay, it is. Okay. Yes. Right, okay. Yes. And uh, <laughs> God help me. I'm going to get fucking fired for this answer. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we decided to do the splits. Uh, three songs on each end and then one cover of the other bands. Okay. 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 And, uh, we were trying to figure out Brownstone and maybe me uh, and some other people uh, took a little bit of acid. <laughs> <laughs> and then I wrote uh, the banjo part and it just like came out of me like no music has ever like. So the banjo part is complete drugs uh, on my end. <laughs> it literally just was like a lightning bolt. I wasn't even playing the instrument. Um, but since then, you know, that song is so beautiful, so heartfelt, so like to the core, there is so much heart in that song and we always love playing it and we'll, I mean, we'll play it for the rest of our lives. We love that song. Yeah, though, so. totally. But <laughs> it is not ours. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for clearing that up. I, I actually was completely unsure of the answer to that. Um, I feel, I think you guys played it at New Year's Eve last year at uh that is like at tavern at the end of the world right because i i feel like i heard you guys play it then and i was like wait is that their song or is that the song but i mean i don't I, remember there is there are times <laughs> there are times where it, it gets the line gets a little blurred where like the old Edison ends and time and place begins. You guys just okay. compliment each other. Well, you're so doing awesome. a great disservice to the old Edison, but I do appreciate <laughs> it. They're the friendliest coattails I've ever ridden. So, <laughs> uh, no, I mean the the similarity in in I feel like songwriting and song style is uh, is just beautifully complementary between you guys. Well, I don't know. Honestly, it maybe maybe the songs. Yeah, but I, uh, I love the concept of we, a band where everybody sings. I love it. Sure, sure. And <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's maybe where we like first meshed, but uh, getting to know every single person that band was probably, I would say, like my favorite time in my life. Um, yeah, it was more than the music. They're all beautiful, great fucking people. And uh, yeah, I mean, two, 2010 to 2012, probably the greatest time of my life. Getting to know those people and doing songs and just every time we would drink a guitar would come out a banjo would come out yeah i'd play a frank turner cover you know whatever but uh yeah all love to old edison i think the first time i met them was probably around 2012 as well i'm mm -hmm. trying to remember now but i'm pretty sure it was a show they played well they played they played several 
I think over the course of the time I worked there, it was at um, Precinct Bar, which uh, is called Brass Union now and has no stage, but we yes, don't yes. talk about that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it was it was the Precinct days for me. I was I I ran sound there and they played. I distinctly remember a show with was it Old Hat? Old Hat. A oh, show with I Old remember. Hat that they played oh, God, they, yeah. but they played several so they all kind of blur together yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it was it was it was quite an interesting time period but uh, i do remember that's around the time that i first met them uh uh old edison and oc45 and amr okay. and the radicals and the whole the whole the, the, domino, the, the radicals the dominoes fell from there of course but um i feel like every band like boston is just like <laughs> Three bands in a trench coat. Yeah. <laughs> the smallest town ever. Yeah. 20 people. Yep. Yep. Held together with stickers, like all yeah. the same stickers, the yes. OTP like stickers, the and old hat fucking stickers. simpson references. But I would not <laughs> for the world. I love it. Like I don't Cabbage. know what I would do. Cabbage. My yeah. entire life, all the people I know now are from you know the Boston music scene, and it's just you know Seriously. it I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah, for sure. Um, do you guys do you guys feel like so? If you, I, I, if we could pivot a little bit and talk about, um, like, since the pandemic has happened, uh, I guess where you where you guys feel like you're at as a band with what's coming next. I don't. I guess I don't know. Uh, well, so I mentioned earlier that we have some songs in the bank. Yeah, but I do believe it's like comedy uh, in the Trump era. Like everything you write doesn't fucking matter in about two weeks. Like it, it's at least as far as I'm concerned, like politically, I can't write, uh, you know, Biden sucks. Everyone knows fucking Biden sucks. You know, uh, it, it's difficult to really like get a hold on being like possibly timeless or saying something that really means anything when you literally are living in the world that is changing week by week. Um, I could write a song about an insurrection this week and who knows, so the Capitol will blow up next. Uh, So we have a lot like in the bank that I do want to record, but it is difficult. Like I could internalize my lyrics and and make them about Brandon, the white man, this this, uh, cunt (laughs) that I am. Uh, but I'm not sure it will hit. Like, it is becoming more and more difficult. Uh, having said that, I am still fucking furious about lots of things. Uh, <laughs> I know, it's so, like that, it's like a kind of dark, it, it, it's like a dark catch 22 because you, you, it's like, yeah, it's going to fuel lots of lyrics, right? It's going to fuel like lots of songwriting. Like the shit that's going on in the world right now is like ripe for art to be made, you know, in response to it. But at the same time, it's like, that sucks, you know? And and then you don't really know, like, you don't really know like where to put your emotions as, as far as, or like where to throw your art and see if it'll stick type of thing. Like, and then you know i don't know you feel guilty exactly like i don't they, it's it's a whole well that's exactly what they said about trump when he when he first got in our uh in, in the office like oh my god like comedy is gonna have a field day like no it's just all shit it's all the same thing yeah. and uh, with twitter and everything else like we're so online like no no we've all heard it we're all very much uh living it too quickly so i'm excited to write different things and uh as far as our recording process has been concerned and how we write songs, I'm excited to get like a little fucking weird with it, to be honest. Yeah. Is my I feeling. Just yeah. Pretty fucking done with living in exciting times. <laughs> <laughs> like it would be nice to be able to write a song about something like boring almost, right? Like something that's not terrible, like something that's just, I don't know. <laughs> Like it would be casually nice introspective about like your life or like the world, but not like terrible. Yeah. Terrible. And then one up by something worse the next day. Yeah. You know, like that's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, no matter what, like the office guys, space lyric. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, like the band's definitely going to do more stuff obviously going forward, but I don't know if we have anything really planned right now. You know, 
I've been thinking about this a lot lately, just for myself. Certainly, we're looking at what's going on locally, globally, whatever it is. There's a lot of, you know, kooky behavior out there, let's say. That, that is one way to put it. That's Yeah, that's I'm being, I'm very, being very polite to my fellow <laughs> human beings out there. Don't. Okay, fair enough. There are a lot of right-wing dingbats who are really fucking shit up and are probably scaring the shit out of a lot of people who don't have the power to fight back. And I don't know. I don't know. I can't conceptualize what it's like to not have the power to fight back because I go through the world as, you know, this guy who's a pretty average brown haired white guy and I don't really have any problems. So how can I use that to do good? So far, it's been drumming and trying to show people that, hey, there are things you can use to put some good out there. And so the thing I've been feeling lately, if I can bring it back, is that there are good people out there who are trying to save the world and they're doing it. And it feels good. There's a lot of scary shit, but I, I feel like the goodness is funneling and it's getting distilled and it's getting powerful. And so... I don't know what we can do as a band other than to say, we've got your back. Here are our tunes. Let's go. Let's, yeah, I don't know. I think like you're not alone is yes. Always been the time place mission statement. Yeah. But I've also found that like yelling at ducks is pretty helpful. (laughs) Well, to be fair, they have it coming. (laughs) I I got nothing good to say about ducks ever. (laughs) Swans, totally so. But I think, yeah, like being a cheerleader for people who are doing good, I think we're kind of living through an era right now where also to piggyback off of what Mike is saying, like, as a straight cis white dude, like, I am not the protagonist of this era. Right. And that's totally fine. Oh. And it's to, to be a cheerleader. <laughs> it's okay to be a cheerleader. Are. Also, also a fas- cool. like a facilitator, I feel like. I'm certainly a believer in the idea that everybody no matter who they are, has something good to contribute. You have one or two things and part of the, I don't want to say the fun of life, but as we move forward in life, you get to discover what that is. Everybody has something meaningful they can contribute. And let's find what it is and enjoy the search. And yeah, yeah. I got lyrics and making everyone look better. So fair enough. Yeah, too. Boom. And you're doing a great job. (laughs) Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's uh, it's it's been interesting to see. It's been encouraging to see like the the people that come out, not even necessarily like come out of the woodwork, but the way that people like show up for for shit when it's needed. You know, just the the way everybody's been rallying the past year, like around trying to save venues in the city. Um, and uh and and stuff like that so i i I think it's been it's just been such an exhausting mix of like knowing that like being reminded of the good of humanity and also just being totally burned out on all the shit i I think it's okay to feel both things it's okay to think (laughs) man i'm just fucking tired but it's also okay to think man when we get out of this good things are going to happen yeah I feel that. And especially, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, the loss of venues because Jesus Christ, Boston is taking a uh, fucking uh, hit. Yeah. And I'm sure every other city has as well. But I do try to keep within my heart like this hope that we will take this shit underground and, you know, do it in houses again and like really set it up. And it whatever it takes, a more personal, you know, thing that I loved growing up and, and actually playing in bands and watching those bands when I was real young. Uh, that is, you know, the natural kind of way of things. Yeah. So it's not all bad, I suppose. I yeah, think I mean, like it's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. But <laughs> well, I think it's, I think it's, it, it, it's okay to acknowledge that it's bad, you know, but it's, it's also like, uh Boston has one of the most like resilient heart hard hardest ass communities I can think of when it comes we to We don't love like landlords, this. I'll tell you that so, much. So yeah, <laughs> we don't we don't fucking love landlords. 
we don't, uh, and, and I mean, there's always going to be a limit to just like, it's just reality. It's like what people can do. But like, I, I do have faith. I do have good faith in, in, in the community, in the city. Um, I, I, that being said, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily make me any, make me feel any better right now, <laughs> but like it is, um, it is also hopeful that like some, some good things in the end will come out of, um, you know, having a, uh, having things being shaken up in the way they were, I guess is the, the kindest way I can put it. I don't, I don't mean that in a callous way, but like, I'm definitely- sometimes change comes along and it sucks at first and then something else good comes out of it, I guess, you know, sure. I mean, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm really happy that at the very least we're not losing O'Brien's completely, even though it's going to be in a new spot. Um, sure. and, and that is sad, but it, it, it it's better than it going away completely. Right. Like, O'Brien's, O'Brien's is going to be in a new spot in three years, but at least it's not going to be completely gone, you know? Sorry. Right. I am definitely like more appreciative of every moment that I've been in a venue, like having that, that feeling of being around people that I, I love and seeing bands that I, that I, you know, give a shit about. And like this year is if anything, so I think we can probably all fit within this box. Like I turned 31 this year. And there is that pull towards, I'm going to kind of be a curmudgeon and stay inside. And ah, it's a fucking Tuesday. I don't know if I want to go to a show tonight. <laughs> that shit's not ever happening again. That sure. just nuked that idea. In my <laughs> yeah. <head>. No. <laughs> like, I will, I will tell the office I'm not fucking coming in tomorrow because this band that I really like. Oh, no, fuck that. No, I'm showing, like, I'm showing up hungover yeah, every day fuck. of the week yeah. to work. Yeah. I mean, oh, drink, God, yeah. Drink, kind of anyways, but like this, this is, this was the year that, I think everybody had to stop and and kind of take stock and be like, okay, if you couldn't do anything outside, what is the thing that you know means something to you? Like, what would you give a shit about if you couldn't do it? And so, I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but for me, like going to shows and, and being around people and getting uh, you know a Narragansett at the midway, like all of these things that I that I gave a shit about, I didn't have this year, and you know, a year later now I'm like, once that comes back, I I'm just like, hook it to my veins. I'm so ready. Oh, dude. There's yeah, going to be you, so I'm... much hugging and so many tears. When well, I'm gonna hug the like shit. it is going to be shows are going to be unreal. You have no fucking idea. How gonna <laughs> I'm going to be there in a different way. Right. Like I'm going to be there in a way of like, fucking, this is awesome. I love it. You know what I mean? Wherever I am like doing Acceptance. whatever, whatever kind of shows. Um, I think about those nights now and, you know, yeah, you're totally right, Ryan, like in, in terms of like this, this year, like erased the tape as far as like all those things that you used to just tell yourself all the time. Yeah. And, and well, as a, even just as a patron, like, oh, I'm not going to go out tonight. I'm not going to do this. Not going to do that. Like, whatever. Well, I, I think it, 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 it gave us a, a window in our own mortality. And here we are. Like time is of the essence. We have to use it the way we can. The best way we can. Every night yeah. buying Narragansetts at the Midway. And <laughs> right. that's the best yeah. way you can do, do it. You want you Narragansett? <laughs> I, I, I can Venmo you some Narragansetts. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I can help you out, man. Go puff. <laughs> Jesus. <buddy>. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> actually, I guess I'll take a second to mention that uh, Tiny Oak booking uh owned and operated by heather timmons is uh doing a series of live streams right now to benefit the midway so yeah i mean people are doing stuff to try to try to keep things going and the midway is a great example because jay has just been such a such an oh, instrumental yeah. crucial part of of this the community in boston and um, well they say they say ne necessity is the mother of all invention and you know, you always see that with underground punk mu uh, movements or any really uh, underground movement. Yeah. So I love to see it. Like people are actually getting into the dirt and doing it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I um, I, I, I like I think about all the people that like when the pandemic started, they didn't miss a fucking beat. Like they stepped up. And it makes me wish that I was like more, uh, less prone to my own depression and anxieties and like more proactive and oh, better yeah. at doing that stuff. But like people like Heather, people like Jay, people like uh, Tim, the manager at uh, O'Brien's and Great Scott, like 
they all like they didn't miss a fucking beat you know like they just did it did whatever they had to do um to to try to like save save everything as as much as they can reach back out to the community and keep things going as well as they can so if nothing else that's been like the most encouraging and like they inspiring they thing have been everything. cornerstones to the movement yeah uh, i mean uh, to what we you know enjoy so Heather's yeah. been uh, Heather's been doing a fantastic job uh, live streaming from the midway every week, and um, I've got a couple. Of seen it, yeah. yeah. I I just take a lot of inspiration from people like Heather who are like, you know what, this is what we got to do. This is what we got to do. But we're still gonna have a show. Through, like we're gonna have a show at the midway, and yeah. people are gonna be able to tune in and watch a show at the midway. So yeah, I I um I think that's really rad. Yeah, it's it's New really, England spirit. It's really seeing that like whatever somebody does a live stream at the midway it's a bit like just kind of seeing you know footage from like the moon yeah and you're like oh it's actually still there like it's it's out there it's there i can't yeah i can't be there but like all right that's what it looks like on the inside in you know whatever year it is yeah and so you know just you know that they say like you know hug the people you love you know always know that you know nothing's permanent but like Boston venues are this perfect case of like, I will never take you for granted again. <laughs> like I'm like, like, collectively if, if trying goes to go down. I'm going to go insane. No, they, the it never goes down. My, yeah. My litmus test for, you know, everything. Yeah. I'm going to be um, one of those people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, I'll say, uh, I know I'm, I'm, I'm newly uh, invigorated as far as being a songwriter's concerns. Um, I, I love this band. You guys have done so just such great work and let's see what the fuck happens. I don't know uh, when there's ever going to be a show again, uh, but recording, uh, putting the actual thoughts, the music to wax. Uh, it's been the greatest pleasure uh, of my life to do it with uh, the other four members of Time and Place. So that's it. I don't know. I just fuck around and maybe uh, the song will happen. Who knows? You know, I would say regardless of what the year is going to reveal to us, I'm just looking forward to that day when we get back to our practice space and we make the sound that is the five of us being loud. Because that just feels like all is right with the earth and we can do anything. It's just, it's just right. And so I'm looking forward to that and I'm going to do what I can to make that happen. And that means wearing a mask. Um, so yeah, I think, I, I think good things are in store and I'm excited to see what they'll be, whatever it is. Yeah. I think, I think the rest of us are as well. I think the rest of us are as well. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I uh, it's been a pleasure to talk to you guys. I really appreciate you coming on for the first uh, new inaugural episode of of uh, Dirty Decibels 2.0 uh, oh, yeah. podcast. <laughs> uh, the the release is American White Noise by Time and Place. You can get it on Bandcamp, uh, timeandplace.bandcamp.com. Uh, you can find them on Spotify. Listen to Spotify. Find them on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. More. <laughs> find them on Spotify. I've been listening to them on Spotify all week. You're literally uh, three Chuck E. Cheese tokens away from the cool pencil topper. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and and look out for good things to come. Uh, you guys are you guys are definitely like one of Boston's uh, most passionate bands, and 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 really like I feel like a good example of of the the boston music scene because i feel like when people ask what the boston music scene is about there it, it's hard to describe because it 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 varies a lot but it like there was a time when people used to be like it's a hardcore boston's like a hardcore city but it's definitely not anymore um no we have feelings and it's and it is and it is a, it is a wild and beautiful mix of 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 punk of folk of um just just community heart, just heart is yeah what we just want. heart um and it's it's in the it's in the lyrics it's in the vocals it's in it's in everything that you guys have going on for sure so um it's been a pleasure to talk to you guys thank you so much for coming on and um, well thank you for having us this is yeah. uh we're, yeah. we're honored yeah you're welcome uh hope to talk to you guys soon Absolutely. Cheers, brother. all righty have a great night take care <laughs>